Welcome everybody. I'm Cindy, Daniel Webster Council's new family engagement coordinator. And this is our monthly membership workshop. And tonight we are talking about winter and holiday recruiting events along with community service ideas as well to get us through these winter months. So thank you guys for joining us. And I'm going to attempt to share my screen. Even after all these Zoom meetings, you never know what we're gonna get here. All right. Does everyone see the screen here? Awesome, great. All right. So um, as you guys have heard us mention many times, our team mentioned many times, um, recruiting is a year round effort. I know a lot of us are sitting here going, whew, falls over, that was busy. Now we can resume normal business, but our normal business should really be thinking about recruiting as a year round effort. This doesn't mean it takes more manpower or more work. It's just working certain things into your calendars. So you wanna have plans that will have you guys prepared to welcome new families every month of the year. So when you're looking at your calendars and you're planning those yearly calendars, or if you go month to month, when you're planning certain activities, think about what made your family join, what, what events attracted your scout, right? And then, you know, how can you seal the deal there? How, how did it get them to come back every week and register and become part of your unit? Just work those events into your planning calendar. So you're not adding extra events. I think a lot of volunteers and unit leaders think, well, I can't add any more, right? I know everybody's super busy and we all have other commitments. It's not adding more. It's just thinking of the activities that you already do and that you already plan and turning those into recruitment opportunities or at least opportunities where you're inviting other potential scouts and their families. So you can look at it as planning seasonal activities, events that can be yearly traditions, and then build on them. For example, this weekend, a lot of our units out there are doing their turkey camp out or their turkey dinners as units. And that is something that becomes a yearly tradition. So it's not any additional planning. It's just thinking about how we can invite other families to those events. Um, so you have those basic, you know, the, all those basics already set. And then that way future leaders also will say, oh, you know what? In November, we do a turkey camp out. Let's make sure we keep that in the calendar. So it's, it just makes it easier in the long run for everybody for planning purposes as well when you really think of something as an annual event that you wanna to continue to do. And then we're gonna talk a little bit more about this in a little bit, scheduling monthly normal friend activities. And we're gonna to refer to them as NFAs. And I'll explain more about that in a minute. So here are some winter holiday ideas. And if you guys wanna chime in, please feel free. I don't like to really talk at people the whole time. <laughs> um, there's, this is just a brief list of some ideas and I can make this slide deck available as well. Um, you know, obviously a lot of our packs usually do a holiday party of some sort. Um, the holiday party, you know, pin, kids love pinatas and they love obviously getting candy and, and free prizes. So that's a great addition to add to any holiday party or gathering or to add as an incentive for your scouts as well when it comes to fundraising or if they invite friends, they have an extra, you know, chance at the pinata, things like that. Um, you can have Santa or a snowman or an elf visit the party. Maybe a volunteer wouldn't mind dressing up if they can borrow a costume. And um, don't forget the hot cocoa bar. This is one of my favorites. I don't know if you guys have had this before. Um, a hot cocoa bar is basically like a Sunday state, you know, Sunday bar, or Sunday buffet, we should call it. Probably not a bar. We could call it more of a buffet. And you can have hot cocoa obviously ready to go or hot water with the cocoa mixes and then have all those toppings lined up along the way. And kids love making their own desserts and making their own you know, um, hot chocolate, obviously. I think that's a favorite. And you, know, you can have um, crumbled up cookie toppings, chocolate chips, whipped cream, all of that stuff. And it's just an extra fun station to have at your event. Um, speaking of stations, Scouting stations is, is always a hit. You could have older scouts, maybe from your partnering troop, 
plan out some different activities that kids of all ages would enjoy and set up little stations either inside your chart organization or outside if it happens to be not a freezing cold day. Fort Frenzy, what kid doesn't like building a snow fort? So when we have snow on the ground, which I know that is not a friendly word to a lot of us out there. I know Jeff was just saying he's headed to Florida, but when the snow arrives, have a fort building competition and then have those scouts also practice their fire skills to see if they can start a fire over the snow. Have each dinner patrol work together to build their construction and then maybe the leaders or their scouts come up with like a scorecard so that way um, everyone knows what is being scored on and then they can build according to that and there'll be a fun little competition. For younger kids and some of the older kids too, and your kids that are more creative, they love doing art in the snow. You can do food coloring mixed, um, um, I, I believe they mix it in with vinegar or maybe even some water. And you can get those squirt bottles maybe at the Dollar Tree or at Christmas tree shop and they squirt the snow. And I don't know if you guys have seen that before, but it's really a fun idea. Um, the kids absolutely love it. And of course, all the bright colors show up really nicely in a perfectly white snowbank. Tubing, tubing is something really easy to plan out because you can go to your local favorite sledding hill or you could book um, some time at a local uh, ski resort as well. And that could be a really fun event for uh, families to bring another family or bring some friends. There's also ice fishing and ice skating, and you could probably plan a day out at Camp Carpenter to do that and plan a day on the ice with your scouts and friends. Um, I also think community events during um, every season is really important. And you guys know we have the mobile base camp along with the soccer darts activity and separate archery ranges as well if the mobile base camp isn't available. And the mobile base camp includes a BB gun range that is um, all enclosed and inflatable, an archery range, which is inflatable as well and has soft tip arrows, um, and other lawn games, as well as other activities built in with little giveaways as well. And the mobile base camp is great um, to tow in some community parades if it's available and our ranger is available. We can tow it as a float and it's just great exposure for scouts in general. And you can have your units march alongside the mobile base camp. Um, your winter holiday strolls that your neighbor, neighborhoods and communities may be having this year. I know some strolls may be canceled due to COVID, but I know some communities are having um, something similar your school functions or your school efforts during the holiday time don't forget to call up your local school districts and see how you can help maybe restock i know some of our schools they have their own food pantries or they have their own um, clothing closets that they need restocking that's a great opportunity to really increase your relationship with the schools other than asking permission to send out flyers I know some local um, businesses have vendor events and it would be great if you could set up a table at a vendor event with a small activity that they can do at the table and just hand out peer-to-peer -peer recruitment cards or some flyers, your local tree linings or even functions at your place of worship or um, at your chartered organization as well. See how you can help out with some of their events that are coming up. Some community service ideas. We just had scouting for food, which was hugely successful, but sometimes a lot of our food pantries need refills by the time um, you know Christmas or Hanukkah or any of the winter holidays come about. So you could organize an, a food pantry refill. You could do a um, holiday meal collection that maybe your unit is putting together boxes of Thanksgiving meals or boxes of Christmas or Hanukkah meals or any other holiday or just people in the winter who are struggling and they have a whole meal in a box and you could run that collection just as a unit and help out those in your community that need it most. You could also do a holiday gift drive, a coat, gloves or mittens drive, blankets or um, some you know coats and gloves and even mittens for those who are homeless or are, are seeking shelter outside this winter. 
I love this idea. And um, I know a lot of our local nursing homes really loved it as well. Um, with COVID, a lot of those patients couldn't have visitors and I'm sure they'd still appreciate it this year as well, but you could build snowmen and kind of dress them up and put them outside of the windows of uh, nursing home um, places or even um, children's homes. And it would just brighten their day to look outside and see the snowmen out there. And we actually saw this, our troop um, was collecting donations for scouting for food. And someone provided a birthday kit, which I thought was so cool. And they had a foil cake pan with cake mix and all the things you needed to bake the cake and, and mix up the cake. Birthday candles, you could add a small gift, maybe a party hat, paper plates, napkins. And this would really be a really cool service project for a unit, even an Eagle project actually, but you could create birthday kits for those in need, or again, maybe a children's home or something like that and um, distribute those fun birthday kits. So they have birthday in a box basically. So when you're out in the community, providing a service and working with other families, take that opportunity to talk about scouting. If you do have visitors there, while you guys are sorting food, while you're putting together care packages or the gift donations, you know, talk casually about scouting and, and all the other cool community service projects and community events that you guys take part in. Be sure to always have peer-to-peer -peer recruitment cards on hand and dress in class A's when you're out in the community or you can choose to use your unit class B t-shirts and wear your scout hats too. Leave flyers and cards wherever you go um, if you have permission to do so, just so as people come in, they see that you are there. This is one example of a social media post that one of our troops did recently. And this is a great one to do for, you know, um, if you're doing community service or in a parade, um, they, you know, listed out, do you have a child that would love to be outdoors, learning new skills, helping the community, consider joining us. They have a QR code. Um, if you need help with that, I can definitely help you with, with creating QR codes. They're super, super easy. And they just have all the information here and it's bright and colorful and it shows a picture of their unit as well. Oh, so I promised we'd talk more about normal friend activities. Before I continue, does anyone on the Zoom have any questions or comments that they wanna share? Nobody, you guys are so quiet. All right, on to normal so, friend activities. Uh, oh, sorry, oh, I normally oh. have more. But um, so like my, my thing is like, um, I'm trying to like get new kids. So I'm just like kind of listening for everything. I want to, like, we're at the point where um, we don't have any kids. Like, we won't be able to recharter if we don't get new kids. Like, I want to do something before just kind of letting it close. So I'm just listening. But, like, my, my pack is, like, non-existent right now. So uh, so that, that's why I don't have a lot of feedback. So. Oh, no, no worries. And, um, and I'm sorry that it's been a hard time for you guys. Um, you know, these are... This all sounds like a lot, but it's all a great way to get the word out about your unit as well. You, even though you may not have many there to be out there, um, you got to start somewhere, right? And I think if you can get the kids that are with you to invite more kids, invite their friends to come and have a little bit. So right now there, there is no one. Like there's no. not even, um, everyone we have is um, an arrow of light. So they're crossing over. Um, so kind of what I'm thinking right now, like I've, I've already heard some ideas here that I think are really good, but um, I'm thinking I'd, I'll um, do the flyers, send out flyers and that like maybe I can uh, work with the troop and incorporate some of these ideas. And like, cause a lot of this stuff are things that the troop would, would have fun with too. And we could put them on as like community events for the kit for, for younger kids. Um, and like the troop could participate and maybe like seeing scouts present, even though they're not Cub Scouts. Um, and having the troop help to run events and stuff that, that of course, hopefully they'll have fun doing too, um, but like are also for the community. Um, like, so like could count as service projects cause it's like, hey, craft night for the community or something. And like, but like hopefully they'd have fun and maybe kids would join and maybe we'd actually gain some Cub Scouts. So maybe we could take some of these ideas and kind of tweak them to like be, to kind of like to work with the troop. So like at least scouts are present. I don't 
<laughs> no, I love that idea. I think that is a good idea. You have you have to work with what you have, right? And like you said, you don't have the little kids at the moment, but you do have the troop. And I think that's a great way to, um, you know, tweak the plan, yeah. as you said. Yeah. And I think that like um, a lot of people, right? Like they think troop and they're like bigger kids, but like they're still kids. Like, you know, yeah. you get the old, even the older ones, like the 16, 17, 18, and like they still like to have fun. You know, so like, know. Um, not, all the, I, I, not everything that people typically think of as being little kid activities should really be considered little kid activities. Like, it still floors me that the troop doesn't do Pinewood Derby. Like, they, they could totally do their cars all themselves. Like, it's, you know, we, we invited the troop to our last Pinewood Derby. We're like, you guys can make cars and race each other on, while we've got the track set up. It was awesome. I know. My son was so disappointed when we like crossed over to the troop and there wasn't a derby but like you said you can certainly have one and and i think that's the thing it's kind of thinking outside the box like not everything has to be a certain way for each unit each unit is different and you know sometimes older kids want to do different things but sometimes they don't sometimes they want to do the stuff that you wouldn't expect you know our pto in middle school you know, we all keep saying, oh, okay, we'll try to think of stuff that the teenage, teenagers want to do because we know it's not like elementary PTO, but even our principal said, you know, guys, they're still kids. They, you know, just like you said, Ella, he said exactly that. They're still kids and they still want to do, they still like all that stuff. They still enjoy all that. And it was a good reminder for all of us. Right. Yeah, and like even if we just do, you know, like if 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 it ends up getting to the point, so like obviously I'm, I'm my goal is to do a recruitment push and hopefully get, um, you know, may, it, fingers crossed maybe I can get a group of kids and end up chartering because I'm at the point where um I I can't like I'm not going to charter more adults than kids like I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm, I mean at this point like I just charter the AOLs on the troop charter because they're going to cross over in two months anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, but um. But, um, but yeah, like, even if it's just, hey, I work with the troop and, you know, we, we take one, because they meet every week and we take one meeting every week and kind of have it be a community welcome fun event mm -hmm. that, you know, maybe, and we advertise it, maybe we can get kids to join. Like, and, and all, a lot of the things you've talked about would be perfect for, for that type of thing. So maybe it'll work. And like, even if we don't make it for recharter, we can always reestablish the pack and charter if we get kids. Yeah, exactly. And I'm glad that um, these ideas are, are, are helping. Um, I'm glad that they're, you know, that they're helpful and they're getting some, some of the juices flowing. That's great. And obviously, Ella, we can talk more too afterwards with, um, you know, just more into detail too, um, when, when you're available. I know I heard a baby in the background, so, <laughs> um, but I would love, I'm always available. That's my buddy. Aw, I'm always available. Okay. Um, you know, to talk about. Yeah, I got, I got your message about, yeah, talking. Um, so yeah, we can talk offline too, but um, thank you. Oh, no, no problem. Thank you. I know it's, I know it's hard and we appreciate everything that you all are doing. I know it's a lot of work. Um, so normal friend activities is really any activity or event that allows young people to just get outside or sometimes the winter months wait to be inside, but as long as they're having fun, that's the goal. It's a low pressure, casual setting, casual activities where scouts invite non-scouts to just join in on the fun. So, you know, things like hikes, picnics, uh, obviously that would probably be more in the nicer weather. Um, you can do an ice cream social, again, maybe do an ice cream buffet inside or a hot cocoa buffet of some sort, um, a service project, local sporting event, tubing, skiing, ice skating, ice fishing, outdoor movie or an indoor movie if COVID uh, restrictions allow, um, barbecues in the nicer weather and then in, um, and lawn games in the nicer weather. And of course, bowling is a favorite activity for my kids I know in the winter as well. Or um, there's roller skating too. Um, you know, consider dressing maybe in your normal street clothes for these, Normal friend activities focus on the fun and not like a high pressure sales pitch. We're going to try to not be too intimidating when those new families first meet you. Um, uniforms are very important and we're not discouraging uniforms. You just may want to think about not leading with the uniform. Um, you know, get have people get to know you as people and friends first 
And then when that way, when they see the tan shirts at your next meeting, they're not as intimidated. Why NFAs work? Well, they're fun and inc inclusive to all. It's not all about scouting and they won't make families feel like, oh, well, I have to know the, you know, scout oath and the scout law and I have to, you know, know all the rules and all that. That can be very high pressure for new people walking in who don't know anything about scouting or know very, very little. So they're just fun and inclusive, no pressure, really, really easy to plan because it can really be any activity. It allows families to get to know you as people and not scouters first. It removes some of the barriers to join such as the uniforms and the pressure to know all the things like I just said. Um, and really try to focus on referring to your group as a sister or brotherhood, a tribe, friends, the village, you know, families nowadays are really looking for their village. And as we all know, with people working, you know, full time and kids in school and so many activities, there really doesn't feel like there's much of a village anymore. And I, I don't know about you guys, but I know scouting has become my village. And I really refer to it as as that to a lot of people when I'm talking about it, because that's what it is. And families crave that. They wanna be a part of something. They don't necessarily want to belong or be a part of an organization. So our team suggests to try to host NFAs monthly. Does it have to be every single month? Does it have to be complicated? Absolutely not. It's just some suggestions. So ask each of your units, families to, think about three families in their life that are non-scouters and have them invite those three families every month. They may say no one month because they're busy or they have, you know, they just can't attend that particular day or maybe they're not interested at that time, but they may, may be interested the next month. Use a multi-channel approach to promote your NFAs. So if you usually do flyers, that's great, but you might want to do flyers, an email to your, you know, whole unit and to your connections and friends out there, Facebook posts, maybe you're texting or sending letters to scouts that may have dropped from your roster previously. And guys on the BSA Brand Center, there is great resources for this. They have email templates and visuals um, to welcome scouts back. So if you have scouts that have dropped, check out those resources because it's those are the low hanging fruit as, as we like to say. So you wanna invite those scouts back, remind them that you're still around and they're welcome to come back and join you when they're ready. Word of mouth, of course, is always great as well. And um, you know, an, another avenue for NFAs is Granite Basecamp. You don't have to be a registered scout to enjoy the programming that Granite Basecamp has to offer. Um, you can go to experiencebasecamp.org and check that out. And you can invite inter interested or new families to meet you there and have your unit, you know, go as a group and enjoy some of that programming together. Oh, and look at that. Speaking of <laughs> Granite Basecamp, don't forget that Cubs Cakes and Claws is coming up on December 11th from 8 to 1030. It is a um, breakfast and you get to meet the big guy and there'll be some activities and then there'll be um, programming following that as well. This is another um, Facebook post. I just thought I'd show a few examples of promoting um, their troop. And it just has a lot of visuals here and the picture is really fantastic. The QR code again, um, and you know, they're you know, probably serving all youth in the Amherst, Mount Vernon area. It's just a great visual to post on Facebook. And this is addition to, you know, sending out flyers, inviting those families in person. It's just another way to communicate that you're out there and it gives people information, what we like to call a call to action. So they're asking them to, you know, they're saying, send us a message, scan the QR code or check out our website. So they're giving a lot of options, which is really important too. Here's another one. This was in the fall, just an example of kind of a holiday one. And this was actually animated GIF. And anything that's animated like videos or GIFs gets a lot more attention than just text on a social media post. So you might wanna keep that in mind and you can easily search GIFs through Facebook or even online. So it won't take up too much of your time. 
and um, it just gives all the information about the fall event that Troop 19 was having, and um, you know, gives all the details for people to join and, and what to expect. Some other resources um, that are um, that I have used actually and find very helpful, especially when you're doing an event and maybe you need food or some items donated. Sign up genius for your unit works really great. Cognito form is are um, similar where you can do signups that way as well. For flyers and social media posts, Grammarly is a great grammar check tool and it's free. And postermywall.com and Canva are online tools to create um, videos, animated flyers, regular flyers that you can print out, social media posts. You can even create um, social media um, images, for example, your Facebook cover photo for your unit or um, a Twitter photo. They have all these, they have all these different settings. So that way it actually fits in there. You don't have to worry about cropping it. They have all these settings where you can create these visuals and it looks really, really professional and very, very interesting. They have endless options. Um, so those are great tools to use to, to help market your unit as well. And this QR code leads to our membership and marketing hub. Um, if you look under leader resources, there's peer-to-peer -peer recruitment cards. There is links to scout talks and um, recruiting playbooks and all sorts of tools for you guys to utilize um, whenever you need them, but just to click away. And that is what I had. I hope I didn't talk super fast, sorry. I usually kind of breeze through. Um, and I didn't know if you guys had more comments or questions at all um, with all that information. And I, like I said, I can definitely send you guys a slide deck as well. Do you guys think those things are doable for a lot of our units? Do you, you know, where do you think some of the challenges may come or some of the wins may come? I think getting this information out to the units would be pretty helpful. You know, yes, definitely. Out. You know, email it to all those units and say, you know, this presentation and say, you know, try some of this stuff because they're obviously not here. I know. <laughs> they're invited, right? Yes. Um, my, the membership monthly, uh, I'm sorry, I have all the membership monthly, the membership Monday newsletters um, do have the link to register. And the link has been okay. in there the past, at least the past three or four weeks, um, almost every week. And um, they also can register on the membership and marketing hub. And it also is often posted on all the Facebook pages as well. That's what I thought, yeah. So yeah, it's just tough because I know not everybody reads all the emails. I know there's a lot of council emails that go out and um, it is tough to get the information out there if people um, aren't opening emails that, that does get challenging. Yeah, I've been dealing with it for years with my troop. I know we, we're all flooded with a lot of information and I think that's an important um, you know, message to uh, hold close because if we feel like we're really flooded with a lot of emails and social media and text messages and phone calls and all these asks and all these invites, right? Think about all our families that are also getting the same. So that's why um, being repetitive and using different avenues to promote what your unit is doing and to promote when your unit meets and to get that information out there in as many ways as possible is so important because yeah. we know ourselves, like we don't read every email, right? I don't open every email and, you know, and I should, you know, I mean, I try to open all my work ones, of course, but, you know, our inboxes are flooded, our social media is flooded, our, you know, our phones are going off constantly, right? So it's a good thing to keep in mind because if we're overwhelmed at times and if we're receiving all these messages and it may not always hit home with us, it's definitely not getting to our families as much as we think it is either. It's, it's not, you're right. It's, it, I, it's to, to me, it's a very frustrating thing because I'm gonna think back to like when I was a scout, right? What, are, what did we have to communicate with each other? We didn't really, right. you know, maybe they gave us a, piece of paper at a meeting to take home, get out some stuff on. We have so many wonderful ways to communicate stuff these days. 
and yet somehow they're not very effective. I think it's because there is so much out many. there. It's it's too much, yeah. Yeah, I think there's just too many. I, I actually, actually had a parent say to me, I, I, I almost laughed. She said, I don't have time to read your emails. I get up in the morning, I have like 10 emails. I don't know, I can't read all that. I'm like 10 emails? <laughs> I get up in the morning, I have 100. <laughs> I know, I know. It's, it's, 